Hi everybody, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, welcome to another Lost Psalms of David. We are on Psalm 175. And um, if you're new to this project, what we're pretty much doing is going through the hymns of Thanksgiving scroll from the Dead Sea Scrolls. And because uh, these hymns prove to be Lost Psalms of David. So we're combing through these um, with uh, all the main authoritative translations, putting them together uh, for the first time using biblical theology and language to the best of our ability, really restoring these in ways that have not happened before with the end time revelation and understanding. So it's pretty exciting. Um, a lot of this stuff is fragmented and some of it can't be saved, but um, it's exciting because there is theology in here that is so significant. Um, it's really worth studying. Uh, it's really amazing. Excuse me. Um, anywho, let's uh, bow our heads and uh, say a quick prayer and we'll get into Psalm 175. Okay? Uh, same format as always. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in this psalm. So, uh, all right, let's do this. Um, okay. Father Yahuwah Elohim, uh, thank you for the opportunity for doing this project without hindrance. I pray that it is pleasing in your sight, um, that it does, it is preserving your word and truth, guarding your precepts, and sharpening the body of Christ and feeding your lambs as we are told to do. Um, Holy Spirit, have your way. Um, please let this be a blessing to the body of Christ and beyond. In Yahushua's name, Amen. All right, guys, let's take right into it, okay? So I already did a video on my YouTube because I was so excited today. Um, this psalm, we get a confirmation of a new biblical cosmological insight that we covered back in Psalm 170. So we're going to talk about that, okay? The rest of this psalm pretty much gets into the theme of most of the psalms, including the psalms in our Bibles. On the day of the Lord, the death of the Messiah, um, you know, the Daniel 9 prophecies, stuff like that, the great floods. Um, but this psalm really covers, we know in Noah's flood, the rainbow represents um, that Yah would not flood the earth again, but next time he'll come with fire. And that's going to be the very last day um, that he cleanses the earth. Because fire is meant to cleanse so something new could come. And... This psalm covers that, the very last day of Armageddon, uh, Yah's wrath and cleansing, fire coming down to earth. Um, very interesting. So, okay guys, let's dig into it, okay? Um, this is clearly a lost psalm of David. You should be able to recognize his tone and narration. I will admit, um, it got a little dry towards the end of this psalm. And I did my best, the best I could to try to preserve David's uh, voice. But um, uh, it was a little tricky, just uh, the amount of context to cover and do it properly so it's clear and understandable. Um, okay, so because I do want to make this, you know, these words, this stuff is beautiful. And I just want to bring that joy and love that the word at least brings to me. I want to bring it to others. So, okay, guys, let's dig into this. I thank you, O Yahuwah, for you have redeemed my soul from the pit, from Shoal and Abaddon, right? The angel of the bottomless pit from Revelation. And you have raised me up to everlasting height. Okay, the same theme we see all throughout, even our Psalms in the Bible. Here we go. I walk on limitless ground, and I know there is hope for him whom you have fashioned from dust for the everlasting counsel. So I walk on limitless ground. We could do a topic search in our Bibles in the book of Psalms saying, you set me in a large place. So we're talking about um, pretty much the same uh, concept here. And here we are, the everlasting council, the, uh, the order of Enoch, um, or the firstborn church, um, as we've been uncovering. Uh, very amazing how David was part of this um, order of the ancients as well that we read about in the book of Yasher, we read about it in the writings of Abraham, and it's all throughout the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, that's what the Dead Sea Scroll community was based around. Uh, really amazing. 
And here we go. Here's our star verse here, um, which we're going to cover. Okay, you have cleansed the perverse spirit of great sin, that it may be appointed up with the host of your holy ones, and that it may enter into community with the congregation of the sons of heaven. So here we go, guys. Back in one, back in Psalm 170, I'm going to click to it right here. We're in Psalm 170, okay? We covered this astounding insight that if you're familiar with biblical cosmology and flat earth, the truth of flat earth and biblical cosmology, specifically the book of Enoch, we learned that the stars in the sky are really angels, and they're in another dimension through the waters above us. And they're angels. Some are good, some are bad, and they're awaiting a judgment. Now with that understanding, and we read these verses, it's amazing because what these verses are telling us is that these angels that are stars in the sky who are awaiting judgment, um, the good angels, of course, um, are, are likely waiting um, in order to be to come part of um, the holy angels. So there seems to be a hierarchy order here, like the holy angels that minister, minister to us humans here on earth, or maybe even to archangel status. So that's something the text have never covered before all that I've never seen this before so it's really amazing that we get that insight uh, for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and here back in 1 Psalm 7 Psalm 175 we get a confirmation of this so this is the second or third witness when and here we it kind of gets into um here we go you have cleansed the perverse spirit of great sin. This is the redemption of our sin nature, right? Our, the redemption of our flesh. That it may be appointed up with the host of your holy ones. So eventually, at the end of the millennial reign, at the end of all flesh, ways we can't conceive of, we're going to be stars in, in the sky somehow. And that's what, right? Host of your holy ones. They're the host. And then that it may enter into community with the congregation of the sons of heaven. And we know through our Bibles, the sons of heaven are the watchers, or the ministering angels called to minister to humans. So this is also prophesied in the future. This seems to be some kind of angelic hierarchy. Amazing, astounding, biblical, cosmological truth that is not in our Bibles or cannot be found or discerned in any other of the extra-biblical texts. Um, the book of Enoch opens this door, but it's amazing. And again, Psalm 170, uh, check out verses 29 through 31. We see the same thing. It's really amazing. Really amazing. Before they became your holy angels. Really amazing. So that's why I translated this, um, that it may be appointed up with the hosts of heaven. You have cleansed a perverse spirit of great sin, that it may be appointed up with the host of your holy ones. Because in truth, that's what's really going on here. Up in the stars. So really amazing, guys. Really amazing. Okay, let's continue. You have allotted to man an everlasting destiny, amidst the spirit of knowledge, that he may praise your name in a common rejoicing, and recount your marvels before all your creatures. It's a really beautiful verse. And here we go. Um, we see this same thing over and over again in these Psalms. Typical Davidic language. And yet I, a creature of clay, what am I? Needed with water. What is my what is worth my mingle? Right? The mingling of our good nature and our Yetzahar and our uh, evil inclination, right? There's a good side of us and a bad side of us. Uh, the robber that accepted Jesus on his right side, and the and the robber that mocked him that was crucified next to Jesus on his left side. And Yahusha, what brings our good nature and our bad nature together? And our eye must be single, right? That's what we're talking about here, that duality. What is worth my mingle and what is my strength, right? Anyone who stood in the presence of the Lord, we have no strength. We're all sinners in need of a Savior. We can't do it on our own. For I was present in the border of wickedness, and my lot was with the damned and wretched, right? So we're hearing about the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. I was present in the border of wickedness, and my lot was the was with the damned and wretched, for the soul of the poor one dwells with the tumultuous turmoil and oppressive disasters dog my steps. 
Now, what I'm learning is that in Hebrew, Hebrew is not very clear with past and present tense of future and all that kind of stuff. So, and I find that the text used that prophetic language. It's referring to past tense, present tense, and future tense all at the same time. So I mixed them both. So it starts off in past tense, but it ends with present tense because in actuality, the text is covering both. So I thought that was a nice spin to it to help the reader understand that. So, okay. Uh, verse 7. When, now here we go into the wrath of the wicked, uh, the day of the Lord, uh, the birth and death of the Messiah, all this kind of stuff, uh, and the end of the world. When all the snares of the pit were opened, and the lures of wickedness were set up, and the nets of the wretched ones spread on the waters, right, the, the wretched ones being the ones coming out of the bottomless pit, that's the way I discern it. Um, when all the arrows of the pit flew without ceasing, bursting forth without hope, when the measuring line falls in judgment, and the lot of anger fell upon those forsaken, venting fury upon the hidden, deceitful, and cunning ones, right, if Satan cast out Satan, a house divided cannot stand. Um, the snares of death to be tightened without escape. That's what we're talking about here. Satan casting out Satan. The Joel 2 army coming out to condemn the wicked. And those who are covered in the blood of the Lamb will be spared. Um, so here we go. Um, it just morphs into end time prophecy and really Armageddon. Um, Yahuwah's cleansing of the whole earth the torrents of belial shall pour over all the high banks of the earth with a consuming fire to devour every tree green and barren as well as their tribulations tribu tribulations even the end of their courses i had to check that word um anyway even the end of the, i think we read about this in the book of revelation don't touch the green yet that kind of stuff so we could be seeing uh, more prophecy into this. It shall scourge with sparks from flames of fire, and shall consume the cliffs of clay, even the plains, and the firmament of dry land, right? Uh, the expanse of dry land. Guys, flat earth, biblical cosmology is truth. And here we go, uh, more confirmation to, to biblical flat earth cosmology. This is just biblical truth. Um, it is. So... The bases of the mountains shall blaze, and the roots of the flint become torrents of pitch, and shall devour as far down as the great abyss. So Yahuwah's fire is not only going to cleanse the earth, it's going to go down into the bottomless pit and persecute and cast judgment on who and whatever is going down in the bottomless pit. All right, We have footage of the actual bottomless pit on the website. Um, I, I'll actually link it in the page below when this is done. But this is interesting because um, this psalm actually talks about the entities living in the bottomless pit, which is something, there's like a mirror verse in Luke which just covers this, about the, the, the insects, scorpions, and the spiders, these alien race of insects living in the bottomless pit underground, um, you know, uh, orchestrating the host body system which we live in. you got to follow Jonathan Kleck's channel to understand this. He's called to reveal this stuff, but um, this is the first scripture I've ever seen that blatantly talks about um, the entities living in the bottomless pit. We're about to cover that, but I'm at my 15 minute mark. We're going to start another video. Okay, we're back. So we just covered verse 12, right? The bases of the mountain shall blaze and the roots of the flint become turns of pitch. And shall devour as far down as the great abyss. That's the bottomless pit. Now I will link this stuff in the description box below. We actually have footage of the bottomless pit. Found on YouTube. Um, on the website. I wrote about it. Um, I haven't read this in a long time. But uh, the general gist is found. Um, this leaked footage. Um, is really. Um, what I'm trying to get at. When we. This footage that we find on YouTube, um, this people are saying this is hollow earth. No one has ever put it together that this is the Bible's bottomless pit. This is actual footage of the Bible's bottomless pit on our flat earth. Because 
the Book of Enoch perfectly describes as you could read what we see in this video. Um, it's really amazing. It's really amazing. So um, I'll leave. You can check that out, guys. Okay. Um, really cool. Really cool. Okay. So we're going to cover this psalm covers uh, the entities that live in the bottomless pit. And uh, our Bibles only touch upon this. Uh, Yahushua himself only touched upon this in the Gospel of Luke. Um, now, for those who have ears to hear, we actually have races of insects, scorpions, spiders, um, living underground from the bottomless pit, um, orchestrating the host body system from which we live. And this stuff is going to come out of the pit for the Great Tribulation. The veil is going to be off and everything is going to be shown for what it truly is. But we get a hint to this in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, for if a son shall break of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask you a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? And here we go. Will he ask an egg? Will he offer him a scorpion? Because there, there are races living underground, um, breeding hybrid humans and all this kind of stuff. Our brother Jonathan Kleck was called to expose this stuff. I will also leave a link to his YouTube channel um, in the article as well, okay? For those who have ears to hear and eyes to hear and eyes to see, please let them see and hear. So, okay, so here we go. Now, continuing in verse 13, this psalm is actually talking about the entities that live in the bottomless pit. Um, again, our only clue and the only place we really see this in our Bibles is in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 11, verse 12. But um, here we go. Check this out. The turrets of Belial shall break through into a bottom. So the judgment is going to break into the bottomless pit, into the angel of the bottomless pit. All right, there's going to be a judgment. And here we go, um, because I know offhand that there are multiple races down there I can't think of a single name for what's going on down there. So I'm using some of the translators were um, cunning enough and uh, discerned enough to use the word plotters. And to the discernment we have in these end times that are coming out, um, we know that that is actual truth here. Okay. So, and the plotters from the abyss shall groan amid the roar of those belching forth slime. And the earth shall cry out because of the calamity fallen upon the world. And those upon it shall rave as if mad, perishing, melting away amid their great misfortune. For Yahuwah shall sound his mighty voice, and his holy abode shall thunder with the truth of his glory. The heavenly host shall cry out, and the earth's foundations shall melt, rocking to and fro. Right? Remember Isaiah? Um... The earth will rock to and fro like a drunkard. I'm sure we're, we're talking about the same thing here. But it's saying it's going to, through that rocking to and fro, the foundations will melt. That's the insight we get here. It's pretty interesting. And if we think about it, that would be absolutely true. And the heavenly warriors shall war and scourge the earth, and shall it not, and shall it not end before the appointed destruction, forever without compare. So there we go, guys. Um, that is our psalm. I think this is really talking about Armageddon, uh, Yahuwah's fiery judgment and cleansing of the earth for the millennial reign. So, um, well, that's at least what I understand. Um, you could check my work. Same format. No pulling punches. This is where I'm getting this stuff from. Um, I will leave extra resources um, when these videos are stitched together very soon. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just see the description box below, and uh, you will see the link to this article. All right, thank you for tuning in. Yah bless you.